No doubt if you're watching this video, you've binged all the Fast and Furious movies, you've mastered all the Need for Speed games, and now you want to spend your entire life savings and probably inheritance building the coolest, the most hectic, fastest, head-turning car that's going to pull all the chicks and get you all that A-fame. And you want it yesterday. But before you go spending all your money and spending the rest of your life living off two-minute noodles, let my experience help and save you from making the same mistakes that I did. These are eight things that you must know before modifying your car. Number one, know what you want from your car. What do you want? The bond between a man and his car is an enigma that only a select few will fully understand and comprehend. And with that, a man knows what he wants from his car. What I mean by that is, do you want to go drifting, have a drift car? Or do you want to have a beautiful car with a paint job and collect all the trophies like a good show car would? Or maybe you're a track head and you want to go and speed the quickest on the track like Nicky Lauda, preferably minus the scars and burns. Because if you don't know what you want or what you're looking for, you're going to commit yourself to something that's going to cause your headaches, isn't actually what you want. And I'm not just talking about cars. So always know what you want from a car. Number two, have a plan of some sort. I've seen it time and time again. Someone buys a car off a whim, they do a few things to it, and then they realize it's not what they want and they sell it for probably less money than what they paid for it. And now they've just wasted $10,000. Silly, I need more money. Have a direction and a goal for your car and how you want to build it and a plan around that. See, with my Skyline, I wanted to make 500 kilowatts and for it to be a predominant track car. But that's it. That's as far as I went. So that's why I've done things like respraying my car and then thinking, oh, I want to put wider wheels on it. I want a hectic bonnet with vents. And now I have a car that looks like a missing piece from a Jack Black table. All in black. So have a goal, but also know how you want to get there. Again, this applies to life. It's actually crazy the amount of car-related stuff that applies to life and vice versa. So... Have a plan. Number three, build your car for you, not the internet. We have enough BRZs on coilovers and with far back exhausts. We don't need any more. Be unique and don't let external influence change the direction that you want to go. Yes, take advice on board, but do not let it steer you from the direction you want to go. Otherwise, you'll end up building your car in someone else's vision. For example, my Skyline build was inspired by another 34 that I saw in a magazine many years ago when I was an apprentice mechanic, along with my dad's passion for cars and like a lot of us watching Fast and Furious movies and playing Need for Speed games. I need NAS. A lot of people who own Japanese cars like to run Recaro seats or Bride seats, but I run Sparco seats because that was part of my vision. Just like a lot of people who own Skylines like to build RB25s, RB26s, or in my case, an RB2530. Wait, everyone does? My point. I wanted to build a 500 kilowatt Skyline that was predominantly a track car, but I didn't really know how or where I was going. So I was subject to people's opinions and influence. Again, like I said before, isn't a bad thing, but you gotta to stick to what you know. Hence, have a plan. If I go back in time, I would take the RB out, dump it in the bin and put something like a V10 or a V12 in there. Can you imagine how cool that would be? Hearing a flat plane V10 coming out of a Skyline on a racetrack? I know some of you are probably sticking your nose up at that, but that's sick, man. Like, someone, please, go and do that. Number four, time or team. Now, I actually learned this from filmmaking, but it also applies to cars and, well, life. Time. Are you willing to spend the time doing something to your car or learning that you can apply to your build? Like me right now, I am about to start pulling this thing apart and I'm going to prep it, sand it, and paint it myself because I know that I can allocate the time to do it and how to learn how to do it, and I don't want to pay someone 15 fucking grand to do it for me. However, if you are unable to dedicate the time to your build or learning a new skill which you can apply in your build, this is where you have to build your team. The A Team. whether it's friends who have skills and knowledge that you don't, through to your engine builders, upholsterers, painters, tuners, all that kind of stuff. Personally, I think certain things need to be left to the professionals. So 
So decide, do you want to spend the time or the money? Number five, to gain something, you have to lose something. Once again, this applies to all aspects of life. I liked philosophy. For example, if you want to gain power, you have to lose fuel economy. If you want to gain cornering ability, you might have to lose ride quality. And like number four, if you don't want to spend the time, you're going to have to spend the money. So when you are planning and working out your goal for what you want to do with the build on your car, if you are not willing to trade X for Y, then don't. Number six, capture your journey. Whether it's photo or video, it doesn't matter, but try and do both because you can't post without content. Maybe you want to start a YouTube channel. Maybe you want to get into videography or photography, or maybe you just want to look back on what you've done. And if you think that you're not going to want to, trust me, you are and you will. I've always wanted to go look back on stuff and think, oh, I wish I had a video of this or a photo of this. So that's why I fucking record everything. Now, this might sound cheesy, but you will grow as a person as your car does as well. <sighs> Shit. That's why us petrol heads, car guys, car enthusiasts, potato, bucking and batata, that's why our connection with us in our car is so strong and only some of us, as you would probably know because you're watching this, would understand. <laughs> so if you're getting stuff done at a workshop, ask them, hey, can I come in and take photos or videos as you guys progress through the build? And if you're skilled in content creation, photography, videos, whatever, sell it to them as free content. Like, hey, can I come in? I won't charge you anything. I just want to capture this and I'll give it to you for free. They might tell you to fuck off. But if you don't ask, the answer will always be no. Regardless of your skill level, what camera or phone you have, just capture content. Get photos, get videos. Doesn't matter how many, doesn't matter if they're shit, just have something because the last thing you wanna do is four years from now, two months from now or whatever, you go, oh, I wish I had a photo of this. Oh, I wish I had a photo of that. And if you have the money and you don't have the stuff, fucking pay someone, just capture it. Number seven, get your car engineered. You know what the government and police are like when it comes to modified cars or anything in that space. I mean, you can go threaten your neighbor, but God help you if you put loan springs in your car. You know what it's like, you know what the system's like, so learn how to play it and beat it. Through getting your car engineered. Now, we all know what petrol heads are like. You'd rather, who wants to spend five grand on a piece of paper when you can spend five grand buying coilovers, turbos, all that kind of stuff? But you see it all the time. Instagram stories, Snapchat, this, that. You're getting pulled over. Someone's getting defected and now your car's off the road. But shall you unfortunately get defected even when you're engineered, which is possible and now you're probably thinking, what's the fucking point? But hear me out. It's easier to change one or two things instead of changing your whole car. I built my engine and I had a lot done to the engine bay and it sure as hell did not look stock. And one day I was pulled over by a police officer on a motorbike in the area that I was living at the time who was notoriously known for defecting cars that even looked modified. He did me for being too low, which is the height I got engineered at, and he wrote return engine beta factory standards. And the second he said that, I thought myself, yeah, get fucked, I'm not doing that. So I went and got my car engineered. So I went through the process of getting my Skyline engineered and I only had to change a few things. A lot of it was emissions. That's the biggest thing that I'm about is emissions and noise. That's probably the two big things that you have to get changed. If it's cool, I would just wind them up. Anyway, I had this unspoken rule with myself that I'm not going to get engineered until I get defected, which is obviously what happened and what I did. But in hindsight, in the long run, it actually would have been cheaper and a lot stress-free free <laughs> if I just did it all in the beginning. By the way, everything that I'm saying, it's not technically legal advice. This is just Jonesy's advice, okay? Once you have an engineer certificate, you seem to get, I wouldn't say respect, but if a cop pulls you over and you say, hey, my car's engineered, they look at you a different light. Again, not probably not all, but most of the ones I've experienced. They actually appreciate the fact that you've gone to the lengths, the time and spent the money to do the right thing and keep your car legal. And also, if you have to change certain things that you change back after you get your car engineered, if a cop doesn't know what they're looking for, then you can probably get away with it because you've already got your certificate. Again, this is not legal advice and I have not done these things, okay? I'm just saying. I am just saying. 
Number eight, enjoy your car for what it is. It doesn't matter if you've got a Tesla. Actually, it does. Tes Teslas are fucking gay. I, they are the most disgusting cars I've ever seen in my life. What I actually mean is don't wait for your car to be where you want it to be or how you want it to look, whether it's, it has to have 10,000 horsepower or it's got to have a $14 million paint job or I've got to have those genuine enky danky wheels, okay? Just take it out as it is, whether it's stock, slow, or a million fucking colors like this thing. Just take your car out and enjoy it. Go to meets, go to cruises, hang out with your mates, because there will be times, I've been, it's happened to me, I'm sure it's happened to you, is you haven't taken your car out in a while, you're spending money on it, and you're thinking to yourself, I'm just gonna sell this thing. I'm spending all this money, I'm not using it, I'm not getting any fun out of it. So just take it out. Obviously, if it's on jack stands with no engine, gonna be a bit fucking hard but enjoy your car for what it is don't wait for like this to be done or that to be done just just take it out have some fun spend some petrol burn some tires because also too no matter what stage you are in your build whether you're just starting or you're almost finished as they say a real project car is never finished there is always going to be something you are going to want to do or going to want to change. So if you have the mindset or the mentality that I'm not going to take my car out or do this A, B or C until X, Y, Z is done, you're not going to ever take your car out, you're not going to enjoy it and you're going to be fucking depressed. So take your car out to events, take it to a track day, take it to a car show, take it out with your mates, go to a cafe, just use your car and have fun because that's what they're there for. Fuck, they're not there to be fucking show ponies. I mean, unless you've got a show car, then it's probably a show pony, hence the, the name. There is definitely more I can say and probably will say in the future to help you in the process, no matter where you are in your build or even if you're just gonna get started, or maybe you're just starting to get into cars and you're thinking, you know what, I hate money. I wanna go build as many cars as I can and just be poor. Don't do that, be smart with your money. Don't buy Japanese shit boxes. Anyway, I really hope this has been helpful. If you have any questions or want to ask anything, message me or comment on the video and I'll help you out. That's what I'm here for. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.